Listen. Listen. The birds are singing. It's almost dawn. And I would like to tell you a story about the dawn of a marriage. There was this husband and wife, newly married. They had a house at the top of the village. And they walked around that house. And they said to one another, Won't it be wonderful when this house is full of the sound of the laughter of our children? Just imagine. And they walk from room to room and room to room and they imagine their children. He was a carpenter. She was a wonderful cook. Oh, well, they would make such wonderful children together. And one day, she said to her husband, I'm going to have a child. And that was the beginning of our story. A child, he says. A child. And he put his hands on her belly and felt the life that was in there. And when the child was born, it was a little boy. <laughs> a beautiful little boy. And the husband and wife, they went around their house. They passed the child from one to the other. They named the child. And then the husband, he made a chair. And he carved their son's name onto the chair. A little boy for them. And time went on. Until one day, the wife said to the husband, My husband, I'm with child. And he put his hands on her belly and felt the life that was there. And when the child was born, a second son. They took that child around the house with the other child at their feet, running between their feet and laughing with them. They named the child and the husband carved the name onto the chair. And time went on until she said, my husband, I'm with child. And when the child was born, it was another son. And so it went on until she had seven sons. And then she said to her husband, enough. Seven sons is enough. And I know, I know, husband, you want a daughter. But I can have no more children. And in this way, four years went by. Until one day, she said to her husband, I am with child. I have to have another. But this was not a good pregnancy. She was always sick. And as the time went on and the time neared, the doctor came, a nurse came and tended her. And the husband said to his sons, your mother is to have another child. Could be tonight. Prepare yourselves, for she is not well. So then, that night, that fateful night, the child was born, a little daughter. Oh, how she was. And when the doctor handed the child to the husband, he said to him, she is not well. She will not last the night. And the husband took the child. So small she was, so thin and pale. Not last the night. And he looked at his wife, and there she was in the bed weeping. And the husband carried his little daughter to the door and to the top of the landing and looked down the stairs at his sons standing, looking up at him. Come, he said, come up the stairs, come quickly. And they clattered up the stairs, and they gathered around their father. Look, he said, here is your sister. Why is she so pale, said one. Oh, my sons, I have to tell you, 
your sister will not last the night. We must bless her before she dies. And you, my sons, all of you, I want you to go down to the well and get some water from that well and bring it here so we bless her. So the seven sons went down the stairs, went into the kitchen. One of them grabbed hold of a jug and they ran out of the door and they ran across the field. And the father watched them go. Don't be long, he said. And he looked at his little daughter. Don't be long, for she will not last long. And they ran and they ran and they ran. And as they were running across the field, another brother grabbed the jug. Let me get the water for our sister. And still they ran, and another brother did the same. Let me get the water for our sister. Until when they get to the well, all of them have their hands upon that jug. And so fierce was their love for their sister who was to die, that they pulled upon that jug and it broke. And all the pieces fell down in the water of the well. And they stood there and saw it disappear and didn't know what to do. And sat around the well with their feet dangling down, weeping. And all the while the father was standing in the window, looking across the field. Where are you? What takes you so long? Your sister is dying. What use are you to be so long? Oh, you fools. I cursed you. You might as well be ravens. And when those words came out of his mouth, for his seven sons, as they sat around the well, oh, the feathers began to push between their skin, to break their skin, until they were flying in the air and turned to seven ravens. And the wife, she looked at her husband and said, What have you done? He could hear scratching at the door, for they had flown across the field and come to that door, and with their claws, with their beaks, they wanted to come home. He went down the stairs and into the kitchen and opened the door, but though he tried to let them in, the wind would not let them go and gathered them up and threw them across the field and he watched them disappear and shut that door and when he came up the stairs his wife said this now we have no sons turned to ravens and our daughter to die what kind of life is this a house full of joy is now a house full of sorrow But she survived the night, did that little thing. And when the dawn came and the birds were singing, she was still alive. She survived that day. And they sat around her and they, they, they caressed her skin. And she stared at them. She wasn't going to die. Another night she survived and another day. And they named her. And they put that name on that chair, and as they did, the husband said to the wife, She shall not know. She must not know that her brothers have been turned into ravens. She mustn't know. For what would she do with such a thing? So he put the chair away, locked it behind a door, and she never knew. And she grew up. A happy bonny thing. <laughs> Twelve years went by. It was on that day. She was down in the market. Amongst the stalls she was buying bread and apples and cheese. She was laughing to herself. Life was good. But in the village there were two sisters. One had a heart so warm, so kind. But her sister had the darkest heart. And it was this sister who saw... That young girl, laughing, and she, well, perhaps she was jealous, and she pointed at the girl and said, You! Yes, you! I'm talking to you! What is it, said the girl? What? You! It's your fault! You killed your brothers! You're a curse! You had seven brothers, and they died because of you! What? 
and she ran through that market. And she ran up the hill, and she came to the house, and she threw the door open. The basket, the cheese, the bread, it went everywhere, apples spinning. And she looked at her mother and father in the far room, and she said, Is it true? Did I have seven brothers? Is it, is it my fault that they've been turned into ravens? Why didn't you tell me? And they came to their daughter, and they put their arms around her, and they told the story, and she listened, and they cried together. It was a long time before they sat up. There's nothing that can be done, they said. It is not your fault. But that night, when the mother and father were asleep, she could not sleep. She said to herself, what if they're still alive? What if they're out there somewhere? I must find them. I will find them, she said. And she went to her mother and father's room. Her mother was asleep. Her father was asleep. And on her mother's finger was a wedding ring. I need proof if I find them. For they won't know who I am. And carefully, so carefully, she took off the ring. And she put it in her pocket. And then she went to her father. On his bedside table, there was a little knife, gold and silver. I might need this, she said. And she went down the stairs into the kitchen. She got some food. She put it into a bag. Ah. And then she looked at the chair that her father had shown her, with all the names on. And there was her name, and there were their names. I must take it with me, she said. And she got some leather. And she strapped it on the chair. And then she pulled it on her back. And she went out the door with the chair on her back. And she swore that she would never sit down until she found her brothers. And she would never give up until she found them. And she began running. She ran down the hill. She ran through the village. She ran up to the forest. And she ran and she ran and she ran until she came to the middle of the forest. And there was the house of a charcoal burner with smoke coming out of the chimney. And she went to the door and she opened the door. Please, she said, help me. And she told her story. Have you seen seven ravens who were my brothers? Do you remember? How long ago, he said. How long ago? Twelve years. Seven ravens, he said. Well, you know, it's strange. You don't see ravens together. And I remember, it was a long time ago, seven ravens in the tree above me, making such a noise. And then I saw that the wind would not let them go and blew them to the north. Perhaps that was your brother's. Would you know if they're still alive? And the charcoal burner smiled at her. How, why do you want to know? Because I am determined to find them. And he reached down and he picked up a piece of charcoal. Well, he said, when you break this, it's black on the outside and the inside. But your brothers, perhaps they are still alive as themselves inside. And if that is the case, they are still alive. Don't give up. And she thanked him and she ran. Still with the chair, strapped to her back, not eating, not resting. She ran and she ran and she ran till she came upon a path. It must have been days later. And there was a shepherdess with all her sheep around her. And she told her story. Have you seen seven ravens? My brothers turned to seven ravens. Have you seen them? And the woman said, well, how long ago? Twelve years. And the shepherdess looked into the sky. Long ago, she said, I remember sitting here with my sheep and I saw ravens. There may have been seven of them. And they were making such a noise. And they were struggling against the wind who would not let them go. And took them to the north. Go north. Don't give up. And she said, I'll never give up. I'll, I won't give up till I know what's happened to them. 
And so she ran and she ran and she ran to the north until eventually she came to a huge orchard. And sitting on a white horse was the Queen of Apples. And the girl, still with the chair, strapped to her back, told her story. Have you seen seven ravens? They were my brothers. Turned into birds. It's my fault. They were cursed by my father. Have you seen them? It was twelve years ago. And the Queen of Apples looked down at her and said, How much do you love them then? I have travelled miles and miles and miles and I will not give up. Did you see them? I saw them, she said. They've been taken to the north. I will give you this. And with that, she rode between the trees and she took down seven apples. Give them to your brothers. I have a feeling that you will find them. Such is the love that you have for them. Go north. Go and speak to the moon. And she thanked the Queen of Apples. And the girl, still with a chair strapped to her back, she ran and she ran and she ran and she ran further and further north until she came to the very edge of the world. And there, there was the moon. And she asked the moon, have you seen my brothers turned to ravens? There were seven of them. Please tell me you did. And the moon looked down at her. You must love your brothers very much. But I'm sorry. I have not seen them. But you could go and ask my brother. He lives far in the east. His name is the sun. Go and ask him. Maybe he's seen the seven ravens. And so the girl ran and ran and ran and ran till she came to the other edge of the world. And there was the sun. And she asked the same question. Have you seen seven ravens? My brothers turned into birds. Please tell me you did, for I've come so far. And the sun stared down at her. Well, you must love them very much. And I am sorry to tell you I have not seen them. But I will give you some hope. For I have a brother. He's called Morning Star. He sees day and night. If anyone has seen them, he will have done. Go with my blessing. She thanked the sun. And she ran 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 and she ran. And and still she did not stop to eat or drink. Still she did not take that chair from her back until she came to the place where dawn, night and day lived. And there, exhausted, she took the chair from her back. She sat down on the chair. She began to eat. And as she was eating, she noticed that stars were falling out of the sky, down towards her, so slowly. And they came down and down and down, and there, right in front of her, was the biggest star, Morning Star. And she told her story. Have you seen my brothers? Seven brothers turned to ravens. I've travelled so far. Tell me you have. And why do you want to know? Because they think I am dead. And it was their fault. But I did not die. And I will not let go. I will not let go. And I will not stop until I find them. Tell me they're alive. Tell me you have seen them. Very well, said Morningstar. A long, long time ago, I saw seven ravens pass this way. The wind that would not let them go. That's them, she said. It drove them to the north. And that's where they are now. For up there, in the coldest of places, there is a glass mountain. And there they live. And there the wind never lets them go. They are looked after. And you want to go there? Yes, more than anything. Then you'll need something to get into the glass mountain. And Morning Star, he reached down on the ground and he picked up a little bone. Take this, he said. This bone will let you into the mountain. I hope you find your brothers. He gave her the bone 
and she wrapped it in a, a little cloth and put it in her pocket and thanked Morning Star. She strapped the chair back on her back and she began to run. And she ran and she ran, it began to snow. And she ran and she ran. The, the, the ground was co covered with ice, there were icicles everywhere. And still she ran and she ran. The snow was breaking beneath her feet and she ran and she ran and she ran and she ran, and she ran until eventually, in the distance, she could see the glass mountain. And she ran faster. And she ran so fast that that little piece of cloth and that little bone came loose in her pocket. And she did not see it. She did not feel it as it fell from that pocket into the snow and vanished behind her. She ran and she ran and she ran until she came to the glass mountain. And now... She saw how big it was, and she ran around that glass mountain looking for a door, and eventually she came to the door. And she looked inside and could see nothing, but she was being watched, for in that glass mountain there was an old man who owned it. And he looked at the girl and wondered what she was doing here, of all places, and wondered what she was doing looking in her pocket. What was she looking for? And when she put her hand in her pocket and no cloth, no bone, what am I to do? Come so far. It's not fair. I will not give up. And that north wind that never let go of her brothers, it began to blow. And it made something rattle in her other pocket. And she put her hand inside and pulled out her father's gold and silver knife. All I need is a bone. And she looked at her hand. A bone to open the door into the glass mountain. And she took that knife and she cut off her little finger. And the finger fell into the snow. And she picked up the finger. And with the knife she scraped off the skin of the finger. And when it was white clean, the sister put the bone of her finger into the lock of the door of the glass mountain. And the door opened. She stepped inside. What wonder is this? My brothers, are you here? Walking towards her was an old man. Well, he said, So, how is it that you can enter my mountain? Who are you? I'm looking for my brothers, turned to seven ravens. I've been told they have been brought here. That is true, said the old man. I look after them. They've been here for twelve years. Every day they go out. And every night they are brought back, driven by the north wind. I give them food and drink. Where are they then? I need to see them. I've travelled so far. Come with me. He closed the door and she followed him. Down one corridor after another. Past one door after another. Until he opened a door into a little room. Here is where they live. She saw a table. On the table there were seven goblets and seven bowls. Here, he said, take that chair off your back. Sit in the corner of the room. I must go and get some food for your brothers. And he was gone, and she took the chair off her back, and she sat down, and she was so tired. And then he came back, a sack of grain. He filled each of the bowls with the grain. And then he went away and came back with a vat of wine and filled the goblets with the wine. And she went over and she looked at the grain and the wine. Do you give them this every night? Is this all they have? This is all they have. This keeps them alive. No. They mustn't stay here. They'll be here soon and I must go, he said. And he left the room and she looked at the goblets and she looked at the grain and, and then she took out of her pocket her mother's wedding ring. And she popped the ring 
into one of the goblets of wine and watched it fall through the red. There, she said. And she went to the corner of the room and she sat down on the chair and she waited and she waited for her seven brothers. And then the door, she could hear scratching and scratching and scratching just like her father must have heard all those years ago. And the door to the little room burst open and in came the seven ravens, swirling and swirling and flying around and landing on the table. And she watched them looking around, looking at the grain, looking at the wine and saying nothing. She sat still as they began to eat and looking at one another. And then they began to drink. And one of them, began to notice something and, and stopped drinking and put his beak right inside of a goblet and pulled out the ring and lay it down on the table. Brothers, he said, this is so strange, come and look. And the seven of them stood there looking at the ring. This is the ring of our mother. And he picked it up and turned it around in his beak. Why is it here? How can it be here? And with that, the girl stood up from her chair and she walked towards them. May I ask you, she said, why you are here? And the seven ravens turned, standing on the table, they turned around and looked at her, this young girl, and they remembered everything. We're here because we failed our sister who was going to die. Our father had sent us to get water from the well. We were so eager to save her life. Each of us wanted to get the water to bless her and they remembered how the jug fell. A terrible sound. So we were cursed. And the wind has brought us here, and though we've tried to go home every day ever since, he will not let us go home. So we are cursed to live here forever. And why are you here, they said. And why is this ring here? Because we know this ring. This is the ring of our mother. Come, she said. And by now she was standing right next to the table. Come here. Come climb up my arms. The seven ravens walked across the table towards her and began to climb up her arms. Up and up they went one after another. Some of them sat upon her shoulder. I have something to tell you, she said. The curse is over. You don't have to live here anymore. For your sister did not die. I am your sister, and I've come to take you home. <laughs> they fell from her arms. They fell onto the ground, spinning and spinning, and as they were spinning on the ground, the feathers fell from their bodies and filled the ground. And there, lying on that ground, were the seven brothers. And as they began to stand, she could see that they were not a day older than the day they were cursed. And they ran towards her. They wrapped their arms around her. And she realized that now she was older than any of them. How strange, she said, is this. And she reached down to her basket and she gave them each an apple from the Queen of Apples. And as she did, she looked at her hand, and now she realized she had seven fingers and seven brothers. Come, she said. It's time to go. And with that, they went to the door and opened the door, and outside was the old man who owned the mountain. I will let you go, he said. And when they got to the glass door, as he opened it, he blessed them. May the wind be always on your back, he said. May the sun shine upon your faces. And may
may your lives always be blessed from this day forward. Go home. And they walked home, walking south, all the way till they came to the village. And when they got there, they, they climbed up the hill. And they got to their house, and they knocked on the door. And inside, their mother and father, sitting in chairs, hugging together. For all the time that their daughter was gone, their grief had filled the house. And the wife had wept so much that her apron was full of salt. And her husband, though he had lit the fires to warm them, not a single fire would light. And so they sat there in the cold, with their arms around one another, waiting to die. For what is the use of life without love, without their children? And then they heard that knock. That must be death. Come for us. Let us go and meet him together. Let us die together, they said. And they went to the door. And they opened the door. What is this? What is this? And the salt fell from the mother's apron onto the ground. As the children ran towards her. And the family wept and wept tears now of joy. And no more sorrow. And at once every single fire in that house lit. And the husband looked at his family and said, From this day forward, may we be blessed. And they were. And there was no more sorrow in that house. And that's my story. It is strange how stories are full of wisdom. How, as storytellers, we are blessed to be part of that wisdom. Some of the stories that come from the world, they are thousands of years old. And you can imagine all the hundreds, thousands of storytellers, men and women, children, who've told these stories, like this story that I told you as dawn has arrived here. These stories have such a kernel of knowledge and wisdom. And none of them belong to anyone. All of them are here to be shared, as I've shared this story with you. The story of the girl who had a chair on her back and who would not give up her quest to find her brothers. My name is Paul Jackson. I am a storyteller. And I am lucky enough to be the chair of the Society for Storytelling in the UK. And one of the things that we are doing is encouraging young people, children, 11 years old, 8 years old, 12 years old, 15 years old, to become the new storytellers. So we are re-beginning what is called the Young Storyteller of the Year, so that these young people can find their voices and add those voices to the stories that you're hearing here in the World Storytelling Cafe, where there are so many wonderful storytellers telling you amazing stories. We are all blessed in these strange times. So, take my story with you. And thank you for listening.